Good day, ladies and gentlemen, out of our studios here in Munich at Commodity TV this morning. With me here is John Budreski, the executive chairman of N-Wave Corporation out of Vancouver. You remember the fantastic, successful dehydration company. And we want to get an update from him because last time we spoke in January this year, so that's uh, around eight months ago. And I think a lot of good things happened with the company. John, good morning. Good Great morning. To good to see you again. Good to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, January we spoke about your company, you gave an update in your new offices in uh, Vancouver. That's correct, yes. And I think a lot of good things happened. So maybe we start, what was the status January and now let's put it like quarter on quarter. I think in a simple word, I would say the company is accelerating. Our yeah. business is picking up pace. <laughs> We've uh, taken extra measures to go and uh, find new partners mm -hmm. to buy our equipment, to do research work, and then ultimately pay us royalties. And the rate of our finding those partners, of signing them into research contracts and into uh, license paying contracts is accelerating. So we're building that portfolio of royalties, our machine sales are uh, increasing every month. Mm -hmm. So that means to me, when I follow your company, when you started like two years ago, you said, hey, this is what we're going to do. We start yeah, to get good companies who want our technology first, they have to try it, and then we want to do license agreements. So you actually delivered on what you said. I believe we are delivering what we said, and we've got more to deliver, but we have gone out and, and sought after operators, large and small. We weren't focused so much on smaller ones before. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking for people who we can conduct business with, and so our pipeline is building. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, Number-wise speaking, um, I mean, the last two quarters, you were cash flow positive, and it correct. looks like you will be profitable for the year, right? Th this company, for the longest time, has been a consumer of cash, and this is the first year that we're going to be cash flow positive, mm -hmm. and that's a trend we intend to continue. We were fortunate enough to have two quarters with some positive earnings, and while I will not put the company in the category of being an earnings growth machine, it's certainly mm -hmm. very nice to be cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot, that's right. What is cash in the bank? About $5 million. So that means you are safe, you are we're clean and clear? We were very comfortable. Yes. We did a financing last fall. We think that, mm -hmm. that that funds will look after us for a very long time. We have no in, intention of going to market or no need to go to market to raise uh, more cash or dilute our equity. Mm -hmm. Has the management participated in the financing too? Certainly they did. We uh, In this financing, I took 10% of it myself personally. That's half and, a million. That's a strong commitment. Uh, it is. Well, I'm strongly committed. And I then like uh, all, of, all of the other management and the board of directors also purchased shares in that financing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, Speaking about your machinery, how, how many machines, or I think you measured also in kilowatt hours, but what have you installed so far? The best way to describe it is the type of machines and how many installations. So we have seven 10 kilowatt machines that are out in the field, uh -huh. uh, either being commissioned or currently generating royalties. And we have five of the larger machines, the 100, 120 kilowatt machines, uh -huh. are now out generating royalties and, and going into production. Mm -hmm. Generating royalties, that's one of the key words, of course. That's yes. your business, that's the future. Um, and I think you were you are very successful with your product, Moon Cheese. Yes. Yeah. So what, what happened there? I think you had the you, you are working with Starbucks together. We are indeed. So we, how, how did this work out? <laughs> how many shops you are have you have now? How, how, how did it work? When we originally launched Moon Cheese, we launched Moon Cheese into uh, small retailers and grocery stores. Mm -hmm. uh, we connected with Starbucks last year. And in July of last year, we went into 3,400 Starbucks stores on a trial basis. Mm -hmm. That trial continued to grow both in terms of volume and time. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of this year, we went into 7,500 Starbucks outlets, which is all of the corporate stores. We also added in about 1,500 outlets in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third group of Starbucks stores, which are those which are franchised and are, reside within a grocery store or a bookstore. And we're in a portion of that. So we like to think that we're in about nine or 10,000 Starbucks stores cool. and growth is continuing quite, uh, quite well. We're happy with, with the way that's working out. Uh, and that means that the sales are going well, right? Because uh, otherwise Starbucks wouldn't do it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. But uh, equally important to the sales is it gives us an opportunity to advertise our, our technology to the world. So if somebody wants to work with us um, on drying some other product, fruits, vegetables, or meats, we can tell them to go to a Starbucks store mm -hmm. and try the benefits of our technology by trying by trying moon cheese. Additionally, um, the concept of puffed dried cheese, which is called moon cheese, we're taking that to other dairy operators around the world. So those in the UK, those in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, we're prospecting all those areas with the desire to introduce moon cheese into those markets as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, I think you are also working, uh, for example, with Bonduel together. I mean, that's a multinational company, very well known yes. here in Europe, of course. Yep. Uh, can, can you describe a bit what is Bonduel or why they are using 
your machines. It's, it's very, very clever what they're doing. Bondwell is using our equipment to not, not to dehydrate vegetables, but to reduce the water content from, let's say, 70%, sorry, 80, 85% down to about 70%. Mm -hmm. Then when you freeze that vegetable, and then you thaw it, it's a crisper vegetable because the ice crystals haven't pierced the cell membranes and it doesn't have water leaking out. So it's a superior form of frozen vegetable. In addition, when you remove some of the water, the color is brighter and the flavor is stronger. Mm -hmm. So they're creating a new category of frozen vegetables that's superior to the existing category. And they're just at the point of starting to propagate that technology, or that new product now. And we're, we're very hopeful that this will work out. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I'm not sure if I can ask, but uh, I will still do it. How many machines do you think you can sell still this year? And how many pro projects or you have projected for next year? Can you give us a little bit of a number? Is that possible? Um, there'll be single digits for both yeah. the 10 kilowatt machines and for the, uh, the 100 kilowatt uh -huh. machines. It's very difficult to predict because we work with operators who are scheduling this technology in amongst another um, other operations that they have. So we often think, well, we'll sign something next month and it takes three or four months down the road to mm -hmm. do it. So it's hard to predict. But we'll have uh, our 10 kilowatt machines are selling very well. So we're probably selling those at the rate of five to 15 a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the 100 kilowatt, the 120 kilowatt machines are probably in the two to four a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how is the company now financially wise set up? I mean, when you sell a machine, you make a profit, of course, and yes. you have the royalty which, which you are collecting. Yes. What is your cost per annum to run the company? And I mean, now you have, you had the cash, the, the positive yep. cash flow. Yep. And will, let's say, the cost go up the more machines you sell, or will it be more stable? Please describe a bit the nature of the business. The, um, the best way to describe it is to say that we see within our, our numbers and the way our company functions is that we can pay for the entire operations of the company through the profits off of the machine sales. Mm -hmm. So, and we're just starting to reach that point now. And therefore all of the royalty money and, uh, and we do some, a little bit of leasing and some other work, mm -hmm. uh, will go straight to the profit line. Mm -hmm. And so we're building a company that will pay for itself through machine sales, mm -hmm. all of those royalties. And that's a building portfolio. As we get more and more machines out into uh, operation will be simply profit, which we intend to pay to the shareholders as dividends. Mm, I like to hear dividends. <laughs> that's the future. Last question. Yes. Um, future dividends that's the one thing which as shareholders we love of course um, on the other hand where is the company situated now let's say with uh, you are working with Merck together you have uh, Sutro Bar uh, pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. uh, what is going on with the pharmaceutical vaccine antibody uh, well in, uh, in the case sector. of Merck we're building a commercial uh, scale machine for them there's three steps to that operation the first was to build a pilot machine which we've done mm -hmm. we're now building a commercial scale machine which is under construction and then the final step to that will be having that machine certified for use in the drug industry with Sutro we're building a machine that should go into production uh, it's a for a different purpose mm -hmm. but that machine will go into production sometime in 2017 mm -hmm. but to the point I made earlier about looking for new partners to do business with we recently hired a pharmaceutical professional who is going to undertake business development in the pharmaceutical area. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go and, and target or hunt pharmaceutical companies to use this technology as well. So we've, of, we've often talked about pharmaceutical is the follow on to the food business and mm -hmm. we're putting resources to ensure that happens. Mm -hmm. So we can say the next, uh, let's say two to three years, that will be another uh, big column of your business. I would, then. I would hope so. That's what we're yeah. trying to do. Yeah. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Well okay. done, John. Thank you very much for Thank that. Thank you. Good to and be back. And all the best. And Thank you. Uh, I think we latest talk in January when, when <laughs> I'm back in Vancouver. We'll see, look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was John Podreski, the executive chairman from NBF Corporation out of Vancouver. And yeah, you heard it. The company is profitable. So now that means they make money. They have a positive cash flow. That's exactly what we want to see. And uh, what we'd like to see is also they told us some 18 months to 24 months ago what they want to do. They exactly did it and they are still executing it. And that's what we like companies which deliver. Check it out. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Munich.